Well, in my closing statement, I'd like to draw together some of the threads of this debate and see what conclusions we can reach. I've maintained tonight that the resurrection was a real historical event. We saw that the majority of scholars today, and I mean first-rate scholars, agree on the essential facts to be explained. By contrast, Bishop Spong denies all three of these facts. He rejects the women's discovery of Jesus' empty tomb. He denies that the disciples saw appearances of Jesus. And he even denies that the original disciples believed in Jesus' resurrection at all, as that word is properly defined. Ironically, then, this places his views further outside of mainstream scholarship than the views of the fundamentalists that he so scornfully speaks of in his writings. Moreover, I think we saw that if you're open to the existence of God, then it's pretty hard to deny that the best explanation of the facts is that God raised Jesus from the dead. And again, sadly, this explanation, which is the one given by the original eyewitnesses, isn't available to Bishop Spong because he doesn't believe in the existence of a personal God distinct from the universe who is the creator of the world. And so he's forced to these desperate expedients like the simple Simon theory, uh, which postulates a cause that is neither big enough nor powerful enough to explain the facts, and which is therefore convinced almost, well, I think virtually no one, uh, certainly no scholar. Now, if I'm right that the resurrection of Jesus really did happen, then I think this has enormous implications for today. It means that Jesus is not just some person in the dusty pages of ancient history or a symbolic figure on a stained glass window. Rather, he is alive and can be known today. Moreover, as the conqueror of death, he holds the key that unlocks the door to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and he who lives and believes in me shall never die. I think it's one of the tragedies of our day that millions of people in mainline Protestant denominations have been denied the opportunity of such a personal relationship with Christ because their churches have been derouted by liberal theology which replaced the risen Christ with myths and symbols. Instead of the gospel, the laity are fed a blasé diet of humanism and moralistic sermonizing. And as a result, their hearts are left empty and craving for spiritual reality. I know. I've been there. You see, I wasn't raised in a church-going home myself. But when I became a teenager, I began to ask the big questions in life. And in the search for answers, I began to attend a church in our community. Unfortunately, it was a, a, a liberal church, which no longer preached the gospel that Christ died for our sins and was raised for our redemption. As one lay leader confided privately to me, it was just a social country club where the dues were a dollar a week in the offering plate. And I found no answers there, nothing to fill the spiritual void that was in my soul. And then one day I walked into my German class and I sat down behind a girl who's one of these types, you know, that is always so happy, it just makes you sick. And I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and I said, Sandy, what are you always so happy about anyway? And she said, well, Bill, it's because I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. And I said, well, I go to church. And she said, that's not enough, Bill. You've got to have him really living in your heart. And I said, well, what would he want to do a thing like that for? And she said, because he loves you, Bill. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Here I was so filled with despair and emptiness. And she said that there was someone who really loved me. And who was it but the God of the universe? And that thought staggered me to think that the God of the universe could love that worm, Bill Craig, down there on that speck of dust called planet Earth. I began to read the New Testament, and as I did so, I was captivated by the person of Jesus of Nazareth. His words had the ring of truth about them, and there was an authenticity about his life that wasn't characteristic of these people who claimed to be his followers in the church I was going to. And I realized I couldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, after a period of about six months of the most intense soul searching, I just came to the end of myself and cried out to God. And I felt this tremendous infusion of joy, like a balloon being blown up and blown up until it was ready to burst. I rushed outside. It was a warm Midwestern summer night. I could see the Milky Way from horizon to horizon. And I thought, God, I've come to know God. And that moment changed my whole life. You see, I thought enough about this message to realize if it were really the truth, if it were really the truth, then I could do nothing less than devote my entire life to spreading this message among mankind. 
And so if you're in the situation I was in, I'd invite you to do the same thing I did. Pick up the New Testament, begin to read it, and ask yourself, could this really be the truth? I believe that it could change your life in the way that it changed mine.